What is the single most important piece of equipment you need to capture video besides a camera? The trends of cinematography change like the seasons, from slow motion to gimbals to drones, but remaining consistent is the importance of a good quality tripod. In this video, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to video tripods and help you find one that fits your needs, as well as share a bit of experience in finding my own tripod. Before jumping into options, the single most important consideration when buying any tripod is the weight of your camera system. That's more than just your camera, it's the combined weight of everything the tripod will be supporting. Rails, follow focus, map box, monitor, everything. There's little point investing in legs and a head that are unable to support the weight of your rig. Starting from the ground up, the legs you choose can impact the quality of your footage, as well as any aching joints and your bank account. Carbon fiber is the logical choice for those seeking the lightest option, but by no means is it the most affordable. Aluminum tripods are less expensive, but the cost savings typically come with added weight, which may be alright if you're not traveling frequently. Regardless of your choice in construction material, overloading legs can cause bowing or flexing that can lead to shaky footage and permanent damage to those legs. Alternatively, using legs with a higher load capacity than the weight of your camera system may seem like a good idea until you have to carry them on your back for an entire day. If you were someone who is primarily a stills photographer and you're a little puzzled right now by the missing center column here, let me introduce you to the wonderful world of bowl heads. They come in a few different sizes. There are 75 millimeter, 100 millimeter, and 150 millimeter to name a few. And the size refers to the diameter of the bowl on your tripod. And bowl heads offer a much faster option for leveling than adjusting individual legs one by one. I want to put a lot of emphasis on that. Now video tripods have a few different spreader options. There are ground spreaders, mid-level spreaders, and no spreaders at all. A ground spreader offers the best stability and a lot of splay, but they're not well suited for outdoor use. A mid-level spreader offers a little less splay than a ground spreader, but still pretty good stability and it's perfectly suited for outdoor use. And a tripod with no spreader at all is going to get your camera really close to the ground for those low angle shots while maintaining a lot of stability. As a wildlife cinematographer, I often travel very long distances on foot before even touching a tripod. For that reason, when deciding upon legs, I focused on three carbon fiber options. Miller's Solo DV three-stage legs, Sattler's TT-752 legs, which are essentially Manfrotto 535 legs, and Gitzo's GT-3542 LS legs, which from now on I'm going to call Gitzo Series 3 legs because I can't remember that huge long name. All three of these tripods have comparable retail prices, they have similar load capacities, and they all weigh about the same amount. Ultimately, the deciding factor for me was collapsible length. Legs with a shorter collapsible length are much easier to handle when they're strapped to the back of a backpack. Also, I looked at the fastener or the leg tightening system. I don't like those clips or those clasps, specifically how they don't work in cold weather. I've been using these Gitzo Series 3 legs now for roughly six months, and this is my 30 second micro review. To begin, there are zero complaints. They are super lightweight, they don't bow or flex under heavy load, they don't perform any differently at extremely cold temperatures, the swappable sensor port is great for quickly switching between head systems, the quarter turn locking mechanism for the legs is fantastic. Even if accidentally left partially untightened, there's still enough friction to prevent the legs from extending unwantedly. They are super easy to disassemble and clean, great when you're working in harsh environments. You also receive a few different feet options, which helps tailor the legs to different surface types. I've added these lens coat leg warmers to protect against accidental bumps, to protect the carbon fiber against the cold, and also gives your shoulder a soft contact point when carrying your legs on your shoulder. 
not your legs, but you get it. The video head you decide upon can have a profound effect in the appearance of your footage. A cheap video head, not necessarily an inexpensive one, can leave your footage looking as if it were captured by an antelope after 10 cups of coffee. Whereas a quality video head creates movements so smooth you won't believe it's not butter. Now a quality video head typically has a viscous fluid inside of it and that enables smooth starts and stops during panning. They also typically have a stepped or continuously variable adjustment setting for drag as well as a counterbalance and the counterbalance helps neutralize the momentum of the camera weight during vertical tilts. More on that in a second. To set up your counterbalance, begin by moving the drag adjustment setting to zero or its off position and move the counterbalance setting to zero or its off position. The next part is very important. Keep one hand on your camera. That's the important bit. Then release the friction from the tilt. If your camera falls in one direction, it's not balanced. From here, you want to move the plate either forwards or backwards, depending on which direction your camera fell. When it's properly balanced, it won't fall in either direction. Now it's actually time to turn up your counterbalance. When it's properly set up, your camera will actually stay in position when it's moved. Just like that. When I began looking for my own video head, I quickly narrowed things down to three competitors. The Miller DS10, the Sattler FSB 6T, and the Sattler FSB 8T. All three of these heads have comparable retail prices, similar load capacities, and all weigh about the same amount. The winner, in my opinion, is the best combination of lightweight, quality, and affordability. In the end, my decision to go with the Sattler FSB 6T was based on previous experience using Sattler products for ENG work. Now, the more expensive Sattler FSB 8T does offer a bit more in terms of load capacity, but the camera systems I typically use are lightweight and hiking friendly, so the Sattler FSB 6T met my needs perfectly while being a little more affordable. The steep prices of mid and high end video heads can be rather daunting, but it's well worth investing beyond your couch cushion savings fund. Manufacturers aren't exactly engaged in a tripod technology arms race, or would it be legs race? Anyways, the point is video head technology doesn't change often, and if you invest in the right one, it should last you a lifetime. Having said that, if you're simply shooting static locked off shots with no camera movement, head over to your local Better Buy big box electronics retailer and pick up the least expensive Ben Frodo video head that you can find. That'll do the trick for you. The benefits of a quality video head are most pronounced during camera movements with heavy cameras and long focal lengths. To wrap things up, the best tripod for you is one that meets every one of your needs. It's really not worth compromising even the slightest feature because there are so many options out there. Remember, you don't have to find a head and legs from the same manufacturer. Mix and match to make the perfect combination for what you want. Having said that, if you do a lot of work on foot, you're bringing your camera and your tripod with you, give this combination some serious consideration. With that, if you've liked this video, click like. If you've got a question or a comment, put it down below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.